Hey guys, so I finally got a HackRF1 and I'm really excited to get started with it. I've only initially played around with it in Cubic SDR, which is a nice application choice if you have Debian or something else. Uh, you can also try out other things like SDR++ or GQRX, but I found it was very quick and easy to get started. I've always enjoyed Cubic SDR. So if you want to get started with Software Defined Radio, my personal recommendation is not to start with the HackRF1, which is a nice transceiver, meaning it can also transmit in addition to receive radio. So if you want to listen to ham operators, uh, you could get something like an RTL SDR, which is a great place to start. Not only that, it tends to perform a little bit better for receiving than the HackRF one but the hacker f1 has a wide range of access to the spectrum so one megahertz to six gigahertz so it allows you to take apart and look at different protocols you could also design your own protocols so this is a great gadget to have and I'm pretty excited to get started with it so I'll be doing some videos in relation to that but today I want to talk about getting started with SDR and what you should do to get started my personal recommendation is getting an RTL-SDR at RTL-SDR.com. Get the blog version 4, which is the one that's now out at the RTL-SDR store. Uh, you can check that out. You should also take a look at some of my older videos. I also did a video that is similar to something we might be talking about similar to Tempest in that uh, when you run different types of electronic devices, sometimes they can emanate different signals that you're not intending to transmit. Uh, so I did a video covering that and I also did a demonstration in this video on how I can pull out the audio from my speaker because when the speaker amplifier is active, I actually have a few signals accessible that allow me to turn that into a remotely transmitting radio. And so that's the danger that our speakers are really extremely similar to microphones in itself, but also in certain cases can give off signals that can allow them to be remotely listened into. Now, my test only went with 15 feet away. I didn't have any special equipment for this. I just used an RTL-SDR. And in fact, on this video, I actually used the Pine tab from Pine64 that has a built-in SDR. And I also did some modifications to allow me to screw the antenna and bring a new antenna port out through the, the back of the uh, Pine tab. So you can take a look at my video where I talk more about doing that. And I do a demonstration here where I pull audio from a remote speaker that is transmitting signal that it wasn't intending to transmit. So this was unknown uh, actual radio. I was able to pull the signal with GQRX, recorded purely the signal, and it was a little bit rough sounding at first, but once I cleaned it up, I used the application here to clean it up, Audacity. And after I did that, I was able to clean up the audio, take it from here. And as you can see all the noise, I pulled all that extra static out. And I show you how to do all of that in this video. Laptop speakers are transmitting microphones. So take a look at that to understand why wireless is an important topic for your security and privacy as well. And even in some cases, you can actually record passwords just by the sound on the keyboard. So the way you type gives off a unique fingerprint of you, but it also can give off the unique keys you're pressing to access different things on your computer. So radio is a really important topic and I'd like to talk more about it. I've done many videos of it in the past on SDR. Uh, so we're going to talk about Dragon OS. So that's the main topic today. So I've never tried Dragon OS, but I've seen nothing but good things about it. Uh, it is an excellent choice for operating systems if you're looking to get into SDR because all of the time consuming setup has been done for you on a lot of these different applications. So it's an easy out of the box solution for or software defined radio. So if you want to get started with SDR, my personal recommendation, go ahead and grab yourself the kit here and you can see the SDR 
uh, dongle and you can get one of these this is the one I have here and the blog version 3 is the one I have now there's also a blog version 4 out so if you can get that I suggest going ahead and trying for that one uh, it also comes with different antennas so it's a great kit to start with has everything you need including performing this exact video was done just using this kit alone and a computer a tablet in my case but a computer would work just the same so if you're interested in SDR grab yourself this kit this is a great place to get started and we'll cover some more on SDR today I'm gonna to be getting the actual image now what am I gonna choose and what might you want to choose well are you gonna be using it for text-based applications in that case you may want to just use the Raspberry Pi version now if you want to have a little bit of an easier setup and not have to go through the setup on a single board computer you may want to go with the x8664 which is something like an Intel or an AMD machine so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and when I click on that it's gonna allow me to download it so I'll go ahead and hit download I'll go ahead and press enter and I'll be downloading it and then I'm gonna burn it to a USB stick and this is how I'm going to try it out and um, of course if you want to use it on a Raspberry Pi uh, you're more than welcome to try it that way as well in my case I decided I wanted to use it on my ThinkPad so I'm going with the x86-64 version um, and there's a lot of different articles out there that feature Dragon OS so you can follow along some of this and not only that but the developer himself uh, has a channel dedicated to Dragon OS and using it so we may check out some of those videos or we may just perform some of our own but there's a lot of great resources to get started with this and I'm gonna create some as well because I want to help anyone who's interested get started with SDR so like I said this is a great place to start and is what is, I've been using personally for the last few years for all of my videos was the RTL SDR blog version 3 you can go ahead and get the blog version 4 in your case and now I have a HackRF1 which is something I've wanted for many years and I'm interested in sharing some of the things that we can do with it as well there's also a great learning video series on the HackRF1 so if you have the patience to learn uh, that might be something you'll want to check out as well another interesting thing is something called a tempest attack and it's similar to how I was pulling the audio from remote speakers running on in a remote computer and how I was able to listen in and turn those speakers into a remote transmitting microphone without any modification just right out of the box just what the signals that are coming from those uh, amplifier and speakers were transmitting all of the audio turning the speaker into a remote transmitting microphone and in this case this is using a screen so you can actually pull the screen from an HDMI or a VGA cable and so you can see that I've also got a nice document here that I'm going to share with you guys so this is something if you're following the blog I'm gonna attach it to share with everyone following the blog so make sure to follow the blog at bmc.link slash politic tech so or you could go to buymeacoffee.com slash politic tech both are the same page and you can follow for absolutely free there you just simply sign up to follow but you don't have to sign up to follow to read the posts you can check out the posts anyway so if you're interested in that you can actually check it by category so if you're interested in learning more about Linux phones graphics apps OSINT activism related Linux or security and privacy you can simply click on the topic that interests you and it'll go through a range of the posts that are all related to that subject so you don't have to follow to read you can read any of the posts that you want to read or you can follow and get some of the more interesting ones by email and sometimes extra tips and tricks as they come to me sometimes after a video I'll think about something I might have forgotten to mention in the video and then I'll add it to a direct message to people following the blog so make sure to follow over there and if you want to support this kind of content uh, you can always go over here and join either the membership or you can check out the commissions where I also offer laptops that have been Intel neutered and uh, also have a blog shop as well 
So there's a lot of different things and ways you can support, but really the best way to support this channel and blog is simply sharing these posts and videos because that is going to help this grow. And really in the end, that's the idea is just to get more people to be able to see this kind of content. I put a lot of hours into each video, so it takes a lot of hours. Sometimes it'll take 12 hours of just the editing part alone just to get a simple 10, 20 minute video done. Uh, so I put a lot of time into this and I really appreciate people who take the time to share these videos. And here is an article based on a tempest attack, which is capturing the extra radio signals that are coming off of different electronic devices. Now, this is a drone here that could be capturing something at a Black Hat conference, just an example here. And all kinds of things can be picked up, just like how I showed that your speakers can act as remotely transmitting microphones through the demonstration video I made. Now, there's also the ability to capture the screen through a VGA cable or a HDMI cable as well. And as you can see in this photo here, this is the actual screen of the user. And here is the remotely captured image of that. So it will be tend to be in a high contrast black and white picture. So this is something that doesn't require any extra equipment. Now there's also something called the Great Seal bug. Now this is a very interesting other type of radio capture. So the thing was a listening device that was being given to the United States as a gift. So it was a gift by the Soviet Union in 1945. Now this bug is very interesting in that it had a hidden microphone. And what they would do is they would use what's called retro reflectors to reflect the signal to activate that hidden microphone inside the embassy because it was given as a gift, mind you. And now it's at the NSA's National Cryptologic Museum. So what they did was they either got in a van or used some other type of way to transmit the signal to activate that hidden microphone inside the Great Seal. Then they would also take another receiver at the same time and it would allow them to receive all of the conversations happening inside the embassy based on this. And what was really unique about this particular bug is it did not require a battery whatsoever. So there was no need to actually change the battery because it operated purely on radio signals being transmitted from a nearby van or other type of transmitter. It could have even had another transmitter in the building to help relay that signal. And they were able to then capture the conversations. Now this was discovered by British intelligence who were actually listening and looking at the waves and they found they were listening directly to the British, I believe it was the British ambassador or it was one of the ambassadors. And when they heard his voice coming through one of the signals, they found that there was something happening there and they did one of their teardowns of the embassy and they found inside this gift was a hidden microphone and what's known as a retro reflecting bug, which allowed them to use signal to transmit that signal to activate the microphone and then to also receive that using a separate receiver. So that's something pretty interesting and actually HackerF the Great Scott Gadgets has come out with something called the NSA Playset, which actually makes use of this type of theory and uh, type of listening device like the Great the Thing. Um, and they actually made some kits for this where they're able to replicate some of what's known as the Ant Catalog, which is something that got leaked. And I'm not sure you know, who the source of that leak was. I don't know if it's even been publicized or if they even know who it was, but the ant catalog was something used by intelligence agencies to actually buy and market different types of bugs that used retro reflectors. And so this is an interesting way that privacy can be violated. I thought it would be fitting for the channel. So talking more about SDR and some of the interesting things you can do with it. So this is just one thing. This is a more advanced type of SDR uh, usage but there's also things like you can just listen into ham operators so with SDR uh, you can 
listen in on Earth satellite and you can actually get imagery, live imagery of the Earth just using an RTL SDR and you can capture that live image, something like this. So you'll actually be taking advantage of the low orbiting Earth satellite in order to capture the imagery basically like you see in the weather station weather satellite is what it is and uh, you can actually get a live image of the earth just by listening into that so that's another interesting use for SDR and of course you can listen in to all the different types of CB radios and otherwise now antennas are pretty important so if you're getting started with SDR one of the other reasons I recommend this particular kit is because it comes with several different antennas that you'll need so when you get this kit from rtl-sdr.com uh, you're gonna get several different antennas and mounts for those antennas so it'll give you something like a suction cup uh, for your window so you can actually attach the antenna to an outside window and it allows you to get a better placement and also you can attach and screw in all different lengths of antenna so you can tune it to the frequencies that you're looking for so here's the actual antennas that come with this kit the one I highly recommend to anyone interested at all in SDR it's a very affordable kit it's about forty dollars I think when I got it it was about thirty dollars but you know as everyone knows prices have gone up but uh, this is an excellent place to start so if you have any interest in SDR this is where you'll want to start and I'll also cover some on the Hacker F1 as well as I get a chance to play with it and we may even try out the entire Tempest thing which I think could be an interesting video as well so we're going to be talking about that and uh, looks like my download failed so I'm going to hit refresh on that so after hearing all this about Tempest attacks and how electromagnetic emissions are going to give off more than you may want well one of the things you can do to protect that is for additional shielding of your electronics devices there's even special rooms that are Faraday rooms where the actual walls are lined with mesh in order to block the signals from getting into that room or out of that room so that's a higher security way or just simply shielding the electronic devices themselves will help at least dampen that signal strength so that less is given off at least at a farther distance and uh, it's definitely a real thing and it's something everyone should be aware of especially if you have any interest in privacy I don't think most people need to worry about this but you know given the way things are going with mass surveillance and it being pretty much the main industry in the world today data collection in one form or another I can see how this could be more of a threat in the future as companies capitalize on what is being learned about this type of electromagnetic emanations and one of the best authors to learn more about this subject is Marcus Kuhn so this is some name you may want to search up for but I will be sharing this document with followers of the blog so if you want to get that and I'll, I'll just leave a link to this as well so anyone who's not following the blog can still get it uh, we'll leave a link to this document in the description so if you don't want to follow the blog I'll still leave a link for everyone there another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab the checksum file so when you get Dragon OS you're gonna go hit the files button after this and you're gonna go and scroll down to get the matching SHA 256 file so this will allow you to cross-reference it and just ensure you downloaded the exact file that you were supposed to download and anytime you check a checksum one of my recommendations is see if you can check through a secondary source this ensures that even if the download server were compromised they wouldn't be able to simply replace the checksum with a matching file for a malicious file download but if that's not available you may have to rely on the checksum provided or if you have it available a PGP signature is another method of verifying the integrity that is actually much more reliable in that it relies on PGP and not simple uh, hash verification
Since I'm downloading the x86 version, which is this file here, which is completed download, I'm going to want to get the matching checksum file for that download to ensure that I get the exact one. So I wouldn't download this one because it's not matching the file. Because I downloaded this file, I'm going to get the R31 SHA-256, which is this one right here. And then I'm going to show you how to match that checksum and verify that it is the file you intended to download. So that is a quick download. As you can see, it's already done. So I have my USB stick. As you can see, I use the LSBLK command to list all my devices. I know it's a 64 gigabyte uh, USB stick, so this is the closest in matching. And since I have that, I can now list the Dragon OS. And I can see the SHA-256, so I can run SHA-256-SUM, and then I'll do there, and I'll compare that to the contents of the SHA-256 file. And this ensures that the checksums are, in fact, identical, and that ensures that you have downloaded the exact file you wanted to download and not something altered or malicious. That's the hash for our Dragon download. Now I'm going to simply cat the actual other file and that should match as well. And as you can see, they're an identical match. That's what you're looking for anytime you check checksums. And if any of this wasn't clear, check out my posts on checksums. You can find them very easily. Just simply look up checksum and you should find the tutorials on checking checksums for both Arch-based and also for Debian-based operating systems. So if you're using Pop! OS, the same commands will apply. I also give demonstrations and created different graphics for you to use to help make it a little easier to understand. So if you're new to Linux and any of this was confusing to you, make sure to check out my checksum posts and videos because those should help break it down in a much simpler way. So now that I've downloaded the Dragon operating system, I can now take a look at my device, which is my USB stick. And if you're running a different size USB stick, my tip to you is either use the end of the DMESG after plugging it in, this will show up the USB stick, or you can use the LSBLK command to check for your disk. So as you can see right here, I have the only one that matches the size. You want to make sure that you match the size because if you end up writing to the wrong disk, you may overwrite your original Linux installation. And of course, that will not be preferable. So once again, I'm going to list and I'm going to burn this to the disk that I know is my USB stick. And it's going to be a very easy DD command. So follow along with me here. And now that I know my USB stick is the slash DEV slash SDC, not the SDC1, but we want to flash it to SDC. And if you have a disk that has multiple partitions, you may see something like this. Uh, but because we're going to be overwriting the entire disk, it's not going to matter. So I will use DD and then IF, which is like the image file, equals. And then I'm going to match it and copy this right here. The ISO file is the one I want to burn. And so because I'm in the current directory with it, I simply name the file I'm going to burn. Then I do of output file equals slash dev slash sdc. And then you may want to add a couple other flags depending on your preference, but you don't have to add these extra flags. So you can simply add this and it'll flash it right to your USB stick. And if you want to add a couple extra flags, you could try these out. And once I press enter, it's going to begin burning this file image file equals to the output file equals which everything in Linux is a file as they say so treat it like a file and that's what we're doing right here now I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna begin burning it to a disk
All right, now that I have finished flashing it to my USB stick, I can simply list it again and then I will show that it has multiple partitions flashed to it. So you don't need to understand any of this. Simply downloading this file from the website we just downloaded it from, SourceForge. Then we ensure that the if command equals the ISO file, which is the actual image for the Linux operating system we're using, which is focused on software-defined radio. Now, the of equals is the output file equals, and that is slash dev slash sdc, and we were able to find out what our USB stick was by using the d mesg command or the lsblk command which lists what's known as the block devices which our usb stick is a block device and so when you use that command it's going to show all of your block devices you want to ensure you match up the size so that you don't overwrite your existing linux install and once it finishes burning it to the disk you can then place it in your computer reboot and boot to that disk so if you have a core boot based laptop like the ones in the blog shop you would simply boot to your computer with the disk in it hit the escape key several times and that'll drop down a list of bootable devices and you will simply select the number that matches the disk now if you have another computer any computer you can add your settings to boot to USB stick in your BIOS or UEFI settings. So for your particular brand, the settings may be different. So make sure to look that up. It may be pressing F1 or F2 when you boot, and that can take you into settings for Lenovo based laptops. Now your brand may vary, so you may need to add those settings if it doesn't boot right to the disk. But for most people, it'll likely boot right to the Linux disk. And then we'll take a look at that as I've never checked this out and I'm excited to try out Dragon Operating System as it provides a ton of great SDR tools and we'll be taking a look at those. So this was how to get Dragon OS, how to get started with Software Defined Radio. Now, when you're ready, to install the firmware. If you got the RTL-SDR dongle and you want to operate it on your existing operating system, an easy way to download the firmware is to simply do apt install RTL-SDR and that'll install it. Now there's also a couple things you need to know about in the mod probe directory where you're going to need to blacklist certain types of firmware to prevent it from loading so that it doesn't interfere with your SDR applications. And I'll talk a little bit more about this as I have in previous videos. So guys, this is how to get Dragon Operating System and some of the interesting things that we may be looking at with Dragon Operating System. This was just an introductory video today and make sure to follow the blog over at bmc.link slash politictech slash posts so you don't miss anything and you can also get interesting posts by email and extra tips at times uh, so make sure to follow over there but you don't have to follow to read and you can browse by category very easily without registering or anything to read those posts and watch those videos so make sure to follow the channel as well i'm on youtube i'm on odyssey on peertube on bitshoot and other places as well and also over at faustadon.org slash at rtp twitter slash tv privacy and i will be back with more on how to protect your security privacy and software defined radio